Okay. I can't tell if Bob is on or not. He is not. He isn't. He is not. Reed, were you able to get a hold of him? Reed. He's frozen all of a sudden. Does he have his mute on? Yeah, he's frozen. He's frozen all of a sudden. That's like, that's like reach frozen. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and, uh, yeah. can, can everybody hear me okay? Perfect, yes. yes. Yeah. Let's go ahead and now uh, get started while Bob is working on that. Like so we'll call the meeting to order and we'll begin with uh, roll call. Charles Black Lambs. Here. Reed Campbell. I see you, Reed, but I can't hear you. Can we take it? Yeah, I think so. Um, Tom Hagelin? Here. Sue Kern? Here. Ruth Nelson? Here. Bob Nystrom? Here. Bob's here. Just hang on one more second. I think Reed must be down and back in a second we want so. Three bobs. Four bobs. <laughs> Bob, you only get one vote. <laughs> There's four pictures of you, but you only get one vote. <laughs> That is good. Hi, Katie. All right, well, we'll go ahead and acknowledge Reed once he gets dialed back in so that we can continue on. Um, let's try our remote Pledge of Allegiance, so please join me. Are we off? There we go. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which we stand. One day, under God, Oh, that harmony! Wow. <laughs> okay. Um, just to uh, just as a reminder, uh, again, due to the, the COVID nineteen and by the. Uh, uh, the governor's uh, executive orders. We are conducting this school board in remotely proposed at camp. Um, and we will discuss that uh, towards the end of the meeting if we'll continue with this method or resume uh, with all live uh, at the board table. So, our first item on our agenda is to. Uh, Approve the agenda as presented and amended. No, as presented. Okay, no amendment. Correct. There is no move to approve the agenda as presented. Second. Thank you. I have a motion by Director Kern, second by Director Nelson for approval of the agenda as presented. Roll call, please. Reed Campbell? Tom Hagelin? Yes. Sue Kern? Yes. Ruth Nelson? Yes. Bob Nystrom? Yes. Hey, hang on one second, Bob. Can you can you mute your computer? Yes. Thank you. We have a review. I think he got it on our radar anytime he tried. Janet, did you get everybody? Charles Black Lamps? Yes. Um, I can't get Reed. So, five of the six voted in favor. 
Okay, thank you. We'll just ask. We'll move into district recognition. I'd like to start tonight by congratulating the Warrior Volleyball Assistant Coach, Nate Ekman, for being named to the Minnesota State Assistant Volleyball Coach of the Year. Congratulations also to the Warriors Boys Head Swimming and Diving Coach, John Zemke, for being named the Minnesota State Boys Class 2A State Swim Coach of the Year. Congratulations also to the Warrior Football Assistant Coach, Aaron Anderson, for being named as the Defensive Line Coach of the Year by the Minnesota Football Coaches Association. Congratulations to the Brainerd Warrior Dance Team, Quinn Garrett's, for being named as Most Valuable Dancer. All state award winners were Gracie Balsley and Mariah Erickson in kick, and Macy Clough and Harley Speaker in jazz. Gracie and Mariah were named to the Minnesota State High School League's All State Tournament Team for high kick, and Macy and Harley were named to the All State uh, Jazz Dance. Harley, Grace, Mariah, Quinn, and India Hintler were named to the All Central Lake Central Lake Conference kick team. Quinn Garrett, Indiana Hiltner, Harley Speaker, and Macy Clow were named to the All Central Lakes Conference jazz team. Congratulations to the Future Problem Solving team members, and a huge thank you to our, the Future Problem Solving coach, Sheila Johnston. The Future Problem Solvers did a great job practicing remotely as they prepared for the virtual state Future Problem Solving competition. The topic this year was living in poverty. Three teams and three individual competitors from Niswa Elementary School and Forest View Middle School qualified for the state of future problem solving competition. Due to the COVID-19, they competed at the virtual state FPS competition on April 17th and 18th, and there was a Zoom awards ceremony on Monday night. We had many award winners. The Global Issues Problem Solving Competition, our junior division individual GIPS GIPS competition was Emmett Becker from Niswa Elementary School took first place and, it, and got an invitation to the virtual international competition because of their of this award. The middle division individual GIPS competition, Vanessa Anderson from Forest View took first place and also got an invitation to the international competition. Scarlett Anderson of Forest View took second place and an invitation to the international competition. In the junior division GIPA team competition, Niswa and Forest View team of Presley Glynn, Calista Anderson, Ava Capel, Abby Isaacson took second place and got an invitation to the invitation into the international competition. In the middle division GIPS team competition, Forest View team of Owen Beerns, Matt Simpson, Drew Klein, they took third place. The fourth grade junior division team of Violet Anderson, Emily Hansen, Autumn Johnson, and Bo Schwartz also competed and presented and represented the district well. Learning to work together via FaceTime while also using a Google Doc competition booklet was a huge stretch for the fourth graders and they grew in unexpected ways as a result of this experience. The, the topic for the international competition, which they will be competing in, is terraforming. And I actually had to look up what terraforming was. And what they said, it's transforming a planet such as Mars or Venus to resemble the Earth, especially so that it could support human life. And so think of the amazing competition that these kids, first of all, the awards that they won at the state level, and now they get to go to the international competition and do this. Um, pretty incredible work um, by the kids and the teachers who supported them. So congratulations to all. And that's all I am.
Tom, your microphone is not on. Right, he was on his phone, then he's on his camera, and he's on his picture. Oh, he's working here now, too. Tom. Oh, yeah, he was up. Isn't that amazing that these kids that did this? Yes. Oh, no, three. Oh, back. Okay. Isn't it amazing that these kids won the state competition though and are going to international? Can you hear me? Yes. No, we can. All right, are we still there, everybody? We are. We are. All right. So just as a reminder to uh, mute your phone and on your computer if you're not speaking. So we'll move into public input. Anything for you? Is there anything on communications? Funny, but there's no one on for public input. Okay, thank you. We'll move right into approval of the uh, April 15th school board minutes. So moved. Was that you, too? Yeah, that was me. I made a motion. There's a second. Oh, second. Thank you. I have a motion by Director Kern, second by Director Nelson for approval of the April 15th board minutes as uh, presented. Any discussion? If not, roll call, please. Tom Hagan? Yes. Sue Kern? Yes. Ruth Nelson? Yes. Bob Nystrom? Yes. <laughs> Charles Black Lance? Yes. Reed Campbell? Five of the six in favor. Thank you. I should have. Next up will be approval. Uh, Next up will be consent and addition and, and uh, of additional bills for payments. Brian, I'm getting feedback again. Is there a motion for the consent agenda? I so move to approve the consent agenda. Second. Second. Does I get a, a motion by Director Kern? Yes. yes. Second. Second by Director Nystrom. Yes. Any further discussion? If not, roll call, please. Sue Kern? Yes. Ruth Nelson? Yes. Bob Nystrom? Yes. Charles Black Lance? Yes. Reed Campbell? Yes. Tom Hagelin? Yes. All in favor? Thank you. Motion approved. Next up will be our beginning of our uh, new business for action, so a building project by uh, the ITS team. Damien, are you on? I am. Um, I think we'll start quick with an FF and E update with Lindsay and Lindsay with Lindsay Prince and Katie Hildebrand, um, and then I'll do an update after that. Perfect. Good evening, everybody. I'm Katie. This is ARI. I've had the opportunity to meet most of you, um, but never probably in front formally as the board. But 
So we were invited tonight to give a quick update on the mortgage market. So I'll go a little bit on the elementary and the one who can hide in from my school standpoint. Um, I'm going to share my screen really quick so you can kind of see where we are at. Since we get to share screens, we might as well take advantage of it. Okay, everybody see that? Yes. So um, where we are at with the elementary um, furniture is um, we had a opportunity to um, meet with all of the principals after the furniture fair that was held um, a few months ago. I can't even remember what month that was at this point. Um, but after the furniture fair, we met with the principals of all of the elementary schools to develop a pilot classroom at each level of the elementary school. So we have a kindergarten pilot classroom, we have a pilot classroom for the first and second grade level, and then we did a pilot classroom for the third and fourth grade level. So here is an image of um, the kindergarten um, typical pilot classroom. And what this does is it incorporates um, existing furniture, so some of the furniture that the district already has, um, which is shown um, many of the tables that they're currently using, um, some of the existing chairs that are within the district that are um, suitable and appropriate for active learning. And then we are also introducing some new types of furniture into these classrooms as well. So um, we're adding in some single testing units, um, we're adding in some active seating pieces into these classrooms. Um, we're also piloting kind of a, a teacher station with a um, sit-stand podium option, um, some mobile file storage system that's lockable so that teachers have some storage in their classrooms as well. Um, we're introducing a student storage bin, so we have a couple of student storage pieces for the um, students to store their work in, a mailbox system and then um, some soft seating into the classrooms as well. So all of them are very similar. So like I said, this is the kindergarten. Um, if we look at the first and second grade floor plan, it's got the same kind of parts that we're using throughout the district. So again, some existing furniture to be used, um, incorporation of active seating, some staff seating, different types of pieces that will be added into the first and second grade level, um, the same teacher station, um, and same type of student storage bins. So that will be for first and second grade, um, and then third and fourth grade mimics the same, the same concept. So we had the opportunity to review these pilot classrooms with the principals um, for confirmation last week. And um, all of them have approved moving forward with this concept. So we are currently going to pilot 14 classrooms between all six elementary schools um, with um, Baxter and River High each having three pilot classrooms because of the size of their school, and then the remaining to have two pilot classrooms. So we have equally distributed between first through fourth grade. So every grade level will have the opportunity to pilot these classrooms. Um, also included in this first wave of furniture purchasing is um, some furniture for the Harrison and Baxter Library. We have some furniture suited for the art science rooms um, in Harrison and Baxter as well. Um, we've developed a standard for the um, principal and some office spaces, so district-wide, there's some uniformity between those pieces, and then also the project learning labs, so we've incorporated some staff student pieces that will be um, implemented into the um, project learning labs as well. So we have gone out for pricing, um, we've received our pre preliminary pricing back, but after our meetings with the principals last week, we made some to the floor plans and quantities. So we are seeing approval tonight to purchase up to $200,000 worth of furniture 
Um, although I do think that we're going to be underneath that with the modifications that we've made um, for our meeting last week with other schools. So that's where we are at on the elementary furniture. Are there any questions? Thank you. No questions. Damien? Um, one thing, uh, Katie, um, we have a motion tonight that's going to be approving uh, spending up to, I believe, two hundred thousand dollars for the for the model classrooms. Uh, do you want to talk about that at all? Yeah. So um, just that two hundred thousand was based on our initial um, budget estimates that we received from the vendors. We are seeking. So we've got three different vendors that we are using in these pilot classrooms. Um, and um, that was based on the original concept. We were going to pilot a few more classrooms. We were up to, um, originally 28, we were gonna double the amount of, of pilot classrooms. Um, but we kind of paired back that after talking to the principals, they were more comfortable with just doing two or three of them per school. Um, so our estimates are gonna be under that 200,000. But we will not receive that final pricing until um, so Friday is when we expect to have that facing back from the contractors, from the vendors, I should say. Okay. Yeah, I think it's a great, great process. We're looking forward to it. And this is the, the first step. Um, after the instructors have had the ability to pilot it, then we will pick the elementary furniture project up again. Um, probably, you know, right after Christmas or right at the beginning of the year to make final decisions on the, um, the six elementary schools and what the um, final product will be for those teachers and the furniture. So, thank you. Great. Thanks, Katie. We appreciate your efforts. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so, we'll go right into our update. Um, the ISD number. 181 for your public schools bond improvements update Monday, April 27, 2020. We are gonna get my slides We're gonna discuss uh we're gonna give a COVID-19 update, uh project updates. Uh we're gonna review a change event for the high school, which is PR10, uh rerouting of gas piping. And then we're gonna be reviewing, uh, we already reviewed the FFN, so we are in good shape. We're gonna have a game. All right, keep moving. Uh, COVID-19 update. So construction has been going very well, considering the times we're in. Uh, we did have a dilemma in high school, um, and Scott Whitmore is going to join us here when he does his high school update and, and talk about uh, some of the some things that took place there. Uh, but we did have our first uh, COVID case on one of our projects, so um, um, we uh, we all got the work through uh, what to do. Um, process and procedures are being followed on the site and we're trying to, again, protect workers and help limit their exposures. Uh, construction is being affected by material plant shutdowns, manpower shortages, and, and we still, we see a few things each each uh, each week. It seems like something new comes up. I know today, uh, I believe we have a ceramic tile that's uh, coming from Mexico that cannot cross into the Across the border right now in the United States, and here we sit waiting for waiting for starting tile. Um, those things <clears throat> they're going to continue to happen, but uh, we're going to keep paying attention and make sure we don't put ourselves into a spot where we can't get work completed. So, sorry, was there a question about that? Okay, uh, move up. <clears throat> so, one thing too, um, now that we know we can, we know that the students are going to continue to dis distance learn. For the remainder of the year, uh, moving moving out and early starts have been put into action for the interior renovations. So all of the project teams are working with the, with the district and putting in grounds, and uh, and uh, we're getting getting ready to get started. So um, kind of give a deadline of two weeks to, uh, to move out, and we, our teams have prioritized areas uh, need first, and again just working with with the staff and uh, uh, getting prepared. So we're excited to get going. And uh, in early jump. So Scott, if you want to give us a quick update and go with the high school Friday. Well, uh, 
uh, last week, Wednesday, uh, we had a worker uh, towards the end of the ship start to exhibit some odd uh, coronavirus type. Uh, they, were, they were exhibiting some symptoms of coronavirus. So Thursday, they went and got tested. Friday at 9 a.m., they did come back as a positive test. Uh, this was about 9 a.m. We were notified uh, pretty immediately that at, at 9.38 per the ICS protocol, we did send everybody home uh, from the job site. And again, that was effective at 9.38. Uh, we did reach out and start making the appropriate notifications. Um, is of today, a cleaning service was on site, infected all the high touch areas per the CDC recommendations. Um, again, uh, plan is to return to site tomorrow. Uh, and all the crews are fully planning to be there. So as of right now, uh, starting tomorrow, we will be continuing operations at the site. Questions about that? Okay. You want to go ahead and give us a quick update on the high school? You bet. Will do. We're all right into the high school here. So, general project update uh, the exterior curtain wall, North Edition, uh, have been continuing on. They're working their way north. Uh, they're getting all the band choir orchestra rooms, the front entrance, all that glass at the end. Near complete, uh, they're getting ahead of the face break a little bit. If you look at the slide, uh, there's a couple of pictures on there showing showing curtain walls as well as the brick that's being installed along the West End. Finishes in the upper level of area one and three. We are in, we can't put finishes, grids in. Rooms are painted. Uh, we've got casework going in, and we're planning on having our carpet installed there 510. Uh, originally, they were supposed to be in at the beginning of May, but the carpet mills in Georgia had been shut down, and as a result, we were unable to get the carpet guaranteed until 511. Exterior framing continues along the east side of area <coughs> two. Uh, we anticipate being sheeting completed by the end of the week. Interior rough ends, uh, underground rough ends, testing have been completed. We need to backfill those. We'll start on the electrical underground rough ends and continue working in area two. Inside of the auditorium, HVAC's been installed, uh, fire suppression been installed. Uh, we'll be working on our electrical because once we start digging, we won't have a surface to work, work off of anymore. So we'll continue on with MEP rough ends. Once those are complete, we'll start digging the orchestra pit and start going, putting some foundations interior of the auditorium itself. Center addition, uh, Frame is continuing, so areas five and six, uh, three foundations are complete, structural steel is going up. Uh, we just poured our last pads of piers last week, starting tomorrow. They will strip those forms and they'll start setting those columns. Uh, interior demolition is nearly complete on the areas that we've gotten into, mainly the little theater, and we will start in area D, uh, the remainder of it, tomorrow with the um, Demolition crew. Any questions as to the progress or the project update? Hearing none, uh, for approval later on this evening, PR10 natural gas reroute. Uh, part of this project is to infill that center courtyard. Uh, unbeknownst to really anybody, there was two natural gas lines running in that courtyard. Uh, per code, we can't have natural gas lines underneath the building pad of an existing building. And as such, those lines need to be rerouted. PR10 is rerouting those natural gas lines from its current configuration through the tunnels uh, to back the A building, B building, the office supply, and the rest of the evening. Any questions related to PR10? Hearing none, the amount uh, is $50,434. And that wraps up my section of the uh, project update. Thanks, Scott. You're welcome. 
Uh, New Baxter Elementary, uh, metal panels and masonry are being installed in the exterior. Curtain wall has been installed. Uh, drywall finishes at the administration wing, prepping for cafeteria equipment, um, working on the boiler, getting that getting things ready to ready for startup in there. Uh, and then the interior finishes of the cafeteria wing. Uh, a lot of good progress on site. Just you know, this, we're uh, we're definitely seeing the light down the tunnel. Um, uh, it's great to see. And we're uh, going to be starting on the gymnasium here, the new, the, the second gymnasium here shortly. This while elementary uh, rough ends up two classrooms of the existing building. Uh, we're working in the areas where the additions are connecting to the existing building. We've got an early jump, uh, working on drywall finishes at the administrative entrance on the west side. And then, uh, of course, we're planning for the phase two work. Um, Again, being early enough with the great, and uh, I believe uh, we're getting started there maybe a little earlier than uh, the full two weeks. Uh, sounds like the staff will be ready for us uh, a little sooner than that. They've been busy, busy packing and moving. So, so we're, uh, we're excited for that. Harrison uh, finishes our, our in high demand right now. We are working throughout the building. Right now. Uh, paint, drywall. We started uh, installing flooring upstairs, moving down the main level after after that. Um, kitchen equipment is going to be delivered the week of April 27th. Uh, in, 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 interior finishes, including painting, ceramic tile, casework, and acoustic ceiling grip are being are being installed throughout the addition. Uh, lower level phase two demo is ongoing. The remaining lower level demo is scheduled to start on May 4th. Again, we did get more level early in the existing building. And uh, which is really great because there's a lot to black on down with that project over the center. Uh, really has some great views um, when you walk into that space. So it's uh, it's really exciting to see the finishes in place. So and when we uh, talk about tours coming up here, it'd be uh, be fun to see your guys' reactions as well. Carfield, <clears throat> some metals are being reviewed, pre-construction walkthrough, and field interpretations have been ongoing. Working on building plan review, uh, come back from the state, working to submit uh, to the city for the final building permit. Building plan review comments are back and the response is being formulated. Department of Health permit review is ongoing for the kitchen. I'm just getting ready to get, get going here as well. Um, these, these wave two projects are very similar in very uh, similar states right now. So they're all kind of getting through permitting and getting, uh, getting ready to get started. Lowell, again, same thing, material permit continues. We're reviewing closure and interior construction. Construction activities are being coordinated with other trades. All final review submissions are complete. The permit review is, in, is underway. We're in process. And we're anticipating a late May groundbreaking with some early site prep starting early May. Um, everything's tracking well. Riverside has got the exact same, in the exact same. Maybe it's because of the same project manager, I'm not sure, but uh, anyway, uh, both, both projects are getting, getting ready to get started and uh, are in good shape. So we'll be we're looking to get going. Back to early childhood, contractors have been sent on contracts, working through the permit and signal processes. Again, that's a later start, so um, getting, getting started to get our ducks in a row. Uh, wave three projects. We're, we've kicked off South Campus design as underway. Um, as far as, and we'll be looking to do the same with Bill Gillespie and the Greater Learning Center. So, and, and back to early childhood, I'm gonna, we're going to call that, uh, uh, oh, help me name. The Warrior Early Learning Center. The Warrior Learning Center. Warrior Learning Center. Warrior Early Learning Center. Welk. We will change that slide. Maybe use an OME on the end, right? Okay. All right. Any questions at all? Looks awesome. I have one question. 
um, have the staff and the teachers been able to get into the schools to remove their things so that their possessions and whatever are out of the way? Or are we going to have a couple days coming up for that? Some of both. Reed, do you want to take this or do you want me to? Can you repeat that question? I wanted to know if the staff and or teachers have gotten into the buildings to remove things so that the construction workers can get to work. Right. Um, and the answer to your question is both. There have been some cases where the teachers have come in and um, cleaned out their classrooms and gotten everything packed up so that we are ready to move them. Um, otherwise, there have been a lot of people in the buildings that are working as essential employees during this process that have been helping with that process. Any that aren't ready, I know Reed has been working with the principals um, last week and this week to get that finalized so that we can get everybody in there doing the construction right away. So um, great um, amount of people just committing to come in and do that. Um, they're practicing the social distancing and all the safety protocols that we're asked to do uh, when they do enter, and so we appreciate um, people doing that. So, great question. Great. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions for Damien or the ICS team? Okay, thank you, uh, Damien and Katie and Scott, others. Yep, please. You're welcome. So we'll move forward with our first uh, attraction agenda item, which is approval of the FF and E as presented for the elementary school. I'll still move approval of the FF and E for the elementary school as the media centers at Baxter Harrison Harrison in the administrative commons area at Baxter Harrison. Second. Thank you. We have a motion by Director Nelson, second by Director Nystrom for approval of the FF and E as presented. Any further discussion? If not, we'll do a roll call, but I will abstain for voting due to a potential conflict. Ruth Nelson? Yes. Bob Nystrom? Bob Nystrom? Yes. Charles Black Labs? Yes. Reed Campbell? Yes. Uh, Sue Kern? Yes. All in favor with the abstention? Thank you. Motion passes. Next up will be uh, approval of the Brainerd High School North Campus Project, um, the, the request of Hans Can National Gas Reroute. Let's do that. Mr. Chair, I also move to approve the North Campus Project for the Brainerd National Gas Reroute that we want to put for $5,000 and $3,000. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Motion by Director Campbell, second by Director Kern for full of the picture as presented. Any further discussion, question? If not, we'll proceed with the roll call. And again, I will in from voting due to conflict. Bob Nystrom. Yes, yes. Charles Black Lance. Yes. Reed Campbell? Yes. Sue Kern? Yes. Ruth Nelson? Yes. All in favor? Thank you. Uh, next up is um, approval of a purchase agreement on our VHS trade homes for $58,500. Uh, Lane or Marcy? You are presenting your budget and she was. Um, so back in October, the board signed a listing agreement with a diner realty um, that went through March 15th. And uh, 
there was a person who reached out to Brad who was interested in buying. So we were able, he was able to execute the, the attached purchase agreement. Um, we originally listed it at 65,000. Um, he reached out to Brian Boardwell and asked how much it would be to finish the house because it is not finished yet. And that was, uh, he came up with an estimate of about 6,500. So that's where the 58.5 came. You'll see in the packet that they did uh, sign the purchase agreement. They have the $3,000 uh, earnest money. They did not have the pre-approved um, letter because of COVID-19, there is some delays, but we did get a letter from Mid-Minnesota uh, explaining why there is delays and that she is confident that they will be approved. So looking for approval on that agreement. Are there any questions? Um, I could get back to you on that one. Yeah, I want to say it was 60 something, but I'm not 100%. Yeah, that's fine. You don't have to do that. Any other questions? If not, is there a motion to approve? I would so move to approve the purchase agreement for the Brainerd High School Trades Home for the amount of $58,500. Thank you. We have a motion by Director Kern, second by Director Campbell for approval of the purchase of DHS Trade Home 58.5. Any further discussion? If not, roll call, please. Charles Buckland's. Yes. Reed Campbell. Yes. Tom Hagland. Yes. Sue Kern. Yes. Ruth Nelson. Yes. Bob Nystrom. He said yes. All in favor. Thank you, motion passes. Next up will be a presentation on our read well by uh, fourth grade. Um, we'll Tim planning to present. Of course, the next three items were in our uh, sent to us earlier. Plaintiff. Oh, there's Tim. Tim is here, yeah. Good evening. Um, I'm not here to actually present unless you request it. Uh, with the presentation already submitted, I was hoping I could just be available to ask questions. And I brought along both Mrs. Wallace for the two core content area process documents. And Mrs. Smithson is, should be joining us remotely um, from home to answer any questions about the rewall by fourth grade. And I can answer questions as well. There she is. Do you want to give just a little sure. overview of the first one? Just In the case of the Rewell uh, literacy intervention, the intent was to find a common comprehensive intervention for elementary special ed for literacy grades K through 4. We have a long history of each site attempting to solve the challenges of intervention support and special ed independently. And now that we have a common core curriculum K-4 literacy, it was appropriate for us to identify then what are the common interventions that we would use. Knowing that special ed needs to align with core instruction, but needs to be distinct from core instruction, we felt it was important to start with one comprehensive intervention and then start adding specific support pieces to it over time, which we will continue to do. This way, special ed teachers will have a menu of approved options to choose from in order for them to respond to the data that's in front of them about the individual needs of their student. Mindful that 
all students are regular ed students first and special ed students second, we need to make sure it was aligned with both the instructional framework, language of instruction, and the nature of our core curriculum, and Read Well does that. So that was our intent in this process. It took us a little bit longer than we had hoped to. Uh, there was a lot of common learning that needed to occur in order to move beyond the local preferences that each site had. Uh, that's why it took almost two years to, to do the work for a group of 16 people. So that's the, the brief overview. Martha, is there some, Mrs. Smith, I'm sorry, is there something you'd wish to add to that description? Um, I think you had covered most of it. The um, Rewell curriculum that we are looking at is very explicit and systematic. It's uh, very heavy in their chronics and fluency. So um, for students that need something a little bit more intensive, this would provide that opportunity for them. Chair Hagelin, do you want to act on each of these individually, or would you like them to give an overview of all three of them as, uh, at the same time? I think we'll, we'll act on them individually since we have it listed that way. Okay. So is there any further questions that anyone might have on our read as well? If not, is there a motion to accept? I'll so move. Thank you. So we have by Director Nelson, second by Director Kern for approval of our uh, adoption of the Bridgewell Literacy Curriculum K 4 in this fall. Any further discussion? If not, we'll call, please. Reed Campbell? Yes. Tom um, Hanglin? Yeah. Sue Kern? Yes. Ruth Nelson? Yes. Bob Nystrom? Yes. Yeah. Charles Black Lance? Yes. Yeah. All in favor? Great, thank you. Next up will be um, questions instead of necessarily presentation. Uh, again, for our DAC K through five math expression to curriculum K through five. Um, Director Murtha, do you want to make a few comments or add? Um, sure, I'll start, and then Ms. Walls can fill in the, the pieces for us. The math expressions, as it's currently adopted in the district, is our math curriculum grades K through five. What math expressions is doing is moving to the next generation of that curriculum. We have been very pleased with what the curriculum has offered us. So the curriculum leaders in consultation with the teachers elected to take a look at some pieces and then move ahead with trying to go just to that next level. So in other words, we're rolling over the adoption by moving to the next generation of math expressions for the reasons that Mrs. Wallace can attest to. Uh, so this is the simplest one. We actually had pre, uh, permission from DAC to bring this forward a while ago, but we kind of were waiting on the other ones. I should have brought this forward at that time. Uh, Mrs. Wallace, do you want to speak to the elements of the curriculum that the teachers are attracted to relative to the standards? Um, our math curriculum, well, our, our state standards haven't changed in math since 2007. And by looking at, we, we were currently using a 2011 edition of Math Expressions. What's available now is a 2019 edition. And it just, um, it does, it, it's more updated. It has a lot of um, enhanced technology features um, that um, with the pilot going on right now have really come in handy with distance learning. Um, some have been used more than others in the past, but now everyone is learning about those. Um, and um, it's really helped us during this time. It was also offered to us um, at a lesser cost because we we're buying workbooks for students each year. The company um, was offering those at a cheaper cost than they were the 2011 edition, which is surprising, but yet, they only want to be producing one instead of two, I suppose. Um, but so the, the cost factor is what caused us to look at it probably a little sooner than we might have. Um, but um, 
we had kindergarten through sixth grade teachers look at it, including special ed, and it was unanimous that um, they liked the updates. Okay, thank you, Patty and Tim. Any questions from board members? Is there a motion to approve? I just want to move the approval of the uh, map of the question of the first one that we I'll second that. So, thank you. I have a motion by Director Campbell, second by Director Blackmont for approval of a resolution for adoption of the map expression curriculum. Did you five, please, this fall? Is there any further discussion? Not roll call, please. Tom Halen. Yes. Sue Kern. Yes. Ruth Nelson. Yes. Bob Nystrom. Yes. Charles Black Lance. Yes. Reed Campbell. Yes. All in favor? Great. Thank you, Motion Passes. <laughs> Um, next up uh, is our final five curriculum, K-3-6. Okay. Much like the math expressions one, there were elements of the old FOSS curriculum that we wanted to preserve. That was the hands-on quality of the experiences for kids in grades K-6. through six. And with the introduction of the new Next Generation Science Standards, that instructional framework that centered around core concepts engineering and science practices and cross-cutting ideas, that instructional framework uh, was what guided us back to the selection of the next generation of FOSS. So there, there is some substantive changes between essentially FOSS 2.0 and FOSS 3.0. The change lies in the fulfillment of the next generation science standards with that cross-curricular structure. It preserves the hands-on elements of the experiential and phenomenological learning um, so that's why, to summarize the whole presentation, why it was chosen again uh, for K fourth science. I'm sorry, K six science. Ms. Wallace, what did I leave out? Complete. <laughs> okay. Any questions from anyone? I guess I just want to make a comment and thank you for working on that. I don't know where you guys will find all the time to do that in all this, but appreciate you staying on that. Thank you, Director Campbell. Uh, the TOSAs should get, um, and the teachers involved in the process, should get accommodation for A, doing the work to begin with, and then finishing it during distance learning. Is that a motion, Director Campbell? I believe it a motion, yeah, to uh, move the resolution for adoption of the science curriculum. Second by Director Hunt for approval of our resolution for adoption of the science curriculum. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. 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 Charles Black Lance. Yeah. Reed Campbell. Yes. Tom Hagelin. Yeah. All in favor. Great. Thank you. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tim. Patty. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The action item is the approval of a resolution for a non-renewal of a non-tenured teacher. Within your board packet. Fair motion. So moved. Second. Thank you, Director Campbell. Yes. Thank you. I'll second it. 
Thank you. We have a motion by Director Campbell, second by Director Nystrom. <coughs> Approval of the non renewal. Roll call, please. Ruth Nelson? Yes. Bob Nystrom? Yes. Charles Black Lance? Yeah. Reed Campbell? Yeah. Tom Hagelin? Yeah. Sue Kern? Yes. All in favor? Thank you. Motion is approved. <clears throat> The action item is uh, our next uh, upcoming school board meeting scheduled for May 11th. <clears throat> and uh, the question before the board is if we want to continue uh, with the teleconference or whether we want to resume in person. Remember last, at our last meeting, uh, it was on an agenda item. We said we'd take up one meeting at a time. Um, I would say if this is Bob, um, if we could do social distancing at the meeting, I would opt for a meeting in the boardroom. I would also. I just think it's a lot harder to meet that way. It's, it's much um, better when we can um, meet together as a group. You know, we're too distant this way, in, in my opinion. Um, we we were able to do our business, but it would be much better if we could be all together. I, I would agree with that, and you know, keep it down to ten or twelve people in the boardroom, all distancing. And if one of us is sick, sick or feeling sick, we can remote call in. Yeah, Any other comments? When does um, Governor Walsh decide on uh, the new, is it through May 5th right now? Right, currently, currently the stay-at-home order would end, I think, a Saturday night or Sunday night. And I expect, though, that uh, it's not tomorrow, it's Thursday, I would think. That's uh, what I've heard, that whether they extend that or not. Yeah, and they were going to make some changes to it. So I would think as long as we were six feet apart, it would be fine. Yeah, we can so set they, it up just a little bit different. Last week, which I'm sure that you've all heard opening up additional businesses mm -hmm. today. I can still consider it a meeting. So that would be the YouTube live. Like, so Any other further comments? Janet just said that we can still consider it a meeting and have the YouTube live for everyone else and have the board in the boardroom and do the uh, communication um, ISD 181, I believe it is, for public input so that we don't get more than 10 people. We can we can easily figure out how to accommodate that in here if you want us to do that. Okay, good. Thank you for that. And yes, another comment. Do you need a motion to come from we just table this then? We would just table it unless unless someone uh, you know felt the other way and wanted to have, um, you know, consider with continuing on with the teleconference. But as of last at our last meeting, we said just so we take it one meeting at a time. This was the, the last meeting that we approved the teleconference. Can we YouTube, please? You guys, I wonder if we if we're going to do the online public input and the online viewing piece of it where it's not an open meeting to the public. I wonder if we should act on it anyway and, and just specify 
that the board will be in the boardroom and the rest will be done interactive. I just want to make sure that you know that we're being open and clear with the public. Oh, thank you, Lynn. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, um, um, yeah. I, uh, I feel the same with the rest of the board. As long as they're being consistent and in line with, um, I guess, uh, health-wise what we're being asked to do, I would feel comfortable with that. Okay, so I think uh, from Evan, maybe what we're looking for is a motion to um, have the, the, the board and uh, up to 10 people in total present at the board meeting, but it would not be open to the public, but we would continue with the, uh, the teleconference, YouTube, those are the other avenues. And just one addition to that, if a board member wanted to be part of the meeting but didn't feel well, didn't have a cough or cold or fever, they could join via teleconferencing. Yeah, thank you, Ruth, for, for the reminder on that. That would be a mandatory even with our the regulations. Okay. Almost felt like you were going to make a motion there, Ruth. Okay, I made a motion. I found a good one. Second. <laughs> okay, I think uh, what I heard was a uh, motion by Director Nelson, second by Director Nystrom, that we would uh, conduct our regular board meeting on May 11th. As normal as far as the board goes, however, if anyone's feeling ill, uh, they are to be remote in. We'll have no more than 10 present in the boardroom. Make sure that we have social distancing and that the meeting is not open for the public, certainly present by teleconferences and other media avenues. Hopefully that's what I heard. Is there any further discussion, questions, clarity? If not, roll call, please. Um, Nystrom? Bob, can you unmute? Yes. Charles Blacklands? Yeah. Reed Campbell? Yes. Tom Hagelin? Yes. Sue Kern? Yes. Ruth Nelson? Yes. All in favor? Great, thank you. Motion passes. Uh, next up will be informational business service report, Marcy. So in your board packet is the financial report. Um, there is nothing to note as of yet because this is as of March. So we did have two weeks um, of distance learning, but people were paid as usual. Um, next month, there may be something that I can speak to a little bit more. I know some of you asked for updates with COVID-19. Um, Lane's going to touch on that later in the meeting, and we're hoping that we can present more details at the next board meeting. Um, I did just want to speak to, I did look up that home, and it was 48,000 last year. And the reason why it was so much less is because there was a lot of things that were not done. They, the buyer actually asked for like not us not to put in toilets and faucets. So that's why it's so much lower compared to this year. Um, looking ahead, uh, we will be looking at our medical bids at the May 27th board meeting. We've had them submitted and the last, um, last best final offer. And now we'll be going to the benefits committee and, talking about that what will be our premiums for next year and then also at the next board meeting we'll talk about 2021 projected budget update we'll give you um what we annually give you for that is there anything any questions thank you thank you next up 
superintendent's report. Okay, thank you. Um, with really genuine sadness tonight to talk about the announcement that was made uh, by the governor last week that school would no, not be in session for the remainder of this school year and that the distance learning period will be extended until the last day of school, which is May 22nd of 2020. Um, you know, it's, I, I put in a memo this week that, um, you know, everyone you talk to, the kids are missing, or the teachers are missing the kids, and the kids are missing the teachers and their friends, and they're looking forward to the day when they can get back together. And we all are looking forward to that day when, when we, when we can have a school year the way we used to. Um, that being said, there were some major changes then that occurred for public education and private education this past week. One then is that the distance learning will continue, but Friday the 1st of May and Monday the 4th of May will be considered professional development days. Um, they've extended two more professional development days for our teachers to have a couple more um, opportunities to continue to get their curriculum ready for to finish strong with our kids and so we've been working on that today I know Tim and Heidi uh, worked extensively to to figure out what that's going to look like and we're, um, we sent out some things today and we'll be uh, reinforcing that tomorrow also last week on Thursday when it was announced that the distance learning period would extend for the remainder of the year we also learned that all spring sports and activities are canceled for the remainder of the school year. And so it truly, it troubles me for our seniors, for all of our students, for our parents, for our teachers, um, that we're not gonna finish the school year the way a normal May is. Um, the favorite time of year for all of us because it's so much fun to recognize the kids and the staff for a job well done for the past nine months. And, actually for 18 years to get to this point. And so um, there were a lot of changes in that announcement. Also a few things, you talked about the uh, executive order to stay at home that um, it is to uh, be extended until Monday, May 4th. Um, the meals for our children, we're continuing to serve meals at three locations from 11 to 1230 uh, every day. And we're uh, supplying over 2,000 meals per day, and we're also doing our weekend meals yet. Our emergency child care continues from 7 o'clock in the morning to 5 p.m. Um, we're continuing to ensure that the, safe, the health, safety, and wellness measures are being put in place. Um, last week, we or at the last board meeting, we talked about what do the end of the year traditions look like. And if you remember, Andrea eloquently talked about being hopeful and pausing. And we have been using the word pause a lot uh, ever since that board meeting because we still are pausing to see what the end of the year might look like. But I would suspect that within the next couple of weeks that uh, recommendation will be brought forward to the Board of Education. Um, Director Kern asked a little bit ago about what's happening with construction. Um, Again, we had a very sad announcement on Friday that we had our first case. We've been working through that on Friday and also spent a great deal of time today working through um, that as a district. Uh, but our teachers are coming in and packing up all their things. Reed and Jeff have the building and grounds staff just working uh, diligently to get everything moved so that our construction workers can uh, get into the buildings just as quickly as we can into spaces that we would have waited until the 28th of May, but we're gonna have about a month's head start on that. And so um, that that will work well for us. There were a couple of board members that asked about the budget. Um, what's, what's happening uh, with the implications caused from COVID-19? And we actually don't have the final numbers. Um, Marcy and I met today to talk about that. And we're going to have a more detailed report for you on the, at the 11th of May. But some of the additions, uh, additional expenses that we have uh, to the general fund were the computers, some of the childcare supplies, some of the extra staff time. 
some of the lost revenue for athletics and activities, some of those types of things. There were some savings, however, with our substitutes, some of our contracted services, uh, some spring contracts, and we hope to have a better, closer number for the Board of Education um, at the May meeting when um, I think we're going to be able to give a lot more detail for you at that time. So you can plan that at the May 11th meeting, there's going to be a lot on budget, uh, giving you just a rough idea of what's finalized for this year and what we're anticipating for next year. Um, but I have to be honest with you from this uh, today is there are so many unknowns that it's kind of our, our best guess as we're moving forward with this. And we'll talk a lot about that at the next meeting. A couple other things that I do want to review. Um, we are going to be able to schedule um, some small group tours of the four buildings on May 5th and 6th. Unfortunately, because of the social distancing and the health and wellness initiatives uh, that are being asked by the CDC, um, they will not be open to the public. However, as we do these, um, we are uh, we think it'll be a great opportunity maybe to have the newspaper come one day and maybe the television to come another day to give an update to the public uh, through the media um, just with where, where the projects are. So we'll be in very small groups of uh, less than 10 people. We will need to social distance. We will uh, drive separate so that we don't have groups of people uh, in the vehicles. And uh, we're going to be really, really careful with this, but we're also going to try to continue to get that positive message out to our public. A couple of meetings ago, uh, the board had a wonderful presentation from Brian Wallace where he talked about the planetarium and the generous gift that Sourcewell has given us over the course of the last three years to basically reinvent our planetarium to buy the equipment and um, one of the things that the Board of Education asked is, will you meet with Sourcewell and will you um, talk a little bit about what the future could be a partnership with Sourcewell and Planetarium after next year when we know the innovation funding won't be available? Brian Wallace and I met with uh, Paul Drange uh, actually this morning, had a wonderful meeting about the Planetarium. And um, some of the things that we're, we're talking about is that he wanted the board to know that there is a full commitment to supporting the planetarium, that even people that were hesitant about what kind of an educational offering this would offer our Region 5 are just totally sold by the work that has been completed by uh, Brian and Tim and the team of science teachers. Um, we don't know after next year what the financial implications will be, but they are hoping that uh, maybe we can do the transportation uh, funding where each school, through the uh, money that they receive from SourceWell, that the transportation could be divided by each of the schools, but they would continue to support the position, the equipment, and everything that we need to provide the high quality programming that is available. And so, um, once again, we're just extremely thankful to Sourcewell that uh, the commitment that they have to high quality teaching and learning uh, in our science department through our planetarium. Um, the last thing that I have is I'd like to give the board an update on the Baxter City Council. They met last Tuesday to talk about summer programming for kids, and I think that uh, they unanimously voted to hold off, to wait and see if we could have just a small program in July. Uh, when we came back, Corey and I met the next day, and we decided that uh, we wouldn't advertise it in the manual, uh, which was due last Friday. But if there is going to be some kind of a program in July, we would do a different method of advertising and collecting funds and, and those kinds of things that it would just look a little bit different for this one summer. So I wanted the board to know that um, it was unanimous agreement by both boards. Or not unanimous, but it was a majority agreement by both boards. And we will continue to be hopeful. Again, it will pause and we'll be hopeful 
that uh, maybe we can do have some kind of programming for our children later in the summer. So that ends my report. Well, great. Thank you, Elaine, and thank you for continuing to navigate as we do yeah. uh, uh, these times that we have in our nation. Thank you for your leadership. You're welcome. Um, just to, to wrap up, so our future meetings, we've got a, a Brainerd Project Oversight meeting, a fifth at 8 o'clock. Our next regular school board meeting is May 11th. And then I see us here for May 27th at 12 o'clock for our second meeting. Is that correct? Yes, that was approved in January at the organizational meeting because that Monday night is Memorial Day. And so if I remember correctly, this is a Wednesday at noon um, in May for that meeting. And that was approved at the organizational meeting. Yeah, thank you for that reminder. Okay, any other business to come before the board? Okay, well, again, thanks everyone for um, enduring this uh, teleconference meeting. It's a bit clunky, but we're getting through. Thank you for your patience as we as we also navigate as, as the board and have this team. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Motion by Director Nystrom, second by Director Kern, and let's have a roll call to confirm that we are going to adjourn. Charles Blacklands? Yeah. Reed Campbell? Yeah. Tom Hagelin? Yeah. Sue Kern? Yes. Ruth Nelson? Ruth Nelson? She's rejoining. <laughs> you can go ahead. Um, Bob Nystrom? Yes. All in favor? All right. Thank you. And thank you, everyone. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.